Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Jaime and I'm the proud owner of an e-commerce agency transforming online brands into market leaders. This video is a very exciting one because I'm talking about the future, where the agency space is heading. I'm gonna talk about the past to see what has changed and also some things that you should know and be aware of if you wanna have true success with your agency in the upcoming months. way I've structured the video and as always I've got some notes here for you guys uh, the way I've structured it is first we're going to be taking a look at the service side of things how that has changed since the early days of social media marketing agency and then I'm going to be taking a look at the market how the market needs have shifted those businesses that are desperate for social media marketing services right now in 2020 and moving forward so I'm very excited for this video I think it's going to be of a ton of value for those of you who already have agencies running to ensure that you are in the loop and you're ready for the changes the massive changes that are coming to the industry and also for those of you who are starting and or thinking of starting your social media marketing agency to be aware of what you should actually be doing so you're not led down the wrong path and so without further ado let's get right into it first and first is the service now it's officially been i think three years since ty lopez popularized the word smma the concept of social media marketing agency now it's not like he's the godfather of social media marketing agency agencies have been around for a very long time before he popularized the term i think he actually has a copyright on on that word but social media marketing agencies have been around for a long time agencies have been around for the longest time ever we've got massive agencies like ogilvy for example who have been around for decades at this point and so the agency model was not something extraordinary right but he certainly popularized the term and what i want to do right now is explain how that has changed how the concept has changed especially on the service side of things and so on the service front and the big thing in 2017 was offering social media management services and that was great because at the time three years ago right most businesses didn't even know what social media was and how it could be used for growth and for growing their business and so definitely that was a service and so to go from nothing to that that was definitely value for those businesses but what happened from then onwards is that people realized that it was very hard to convey the value of social media management to clients. And the reason why this is, and I've explained this in past videos, is because with social media management, there's not a clear return for the client. There's not a clear cut ROI on, on the service, right? What you're actually optimizing for is brand awareness, is uh, followers, is uh, eyeballs on the brand and building organic traffic, which that certainly has value, right? And it's gonna lead to revenue, but you can't clearly indicate how much money bringing those followers in to the brand has actually generated, right? It's very, very hard to make it very tangible for the client. And so clients realized that there was no tangible benefit to social media management. And yes, there's a ton of agencies who are still crushing it with social media management. But if someone was to start a social media management uh, agency right now, you would definitely be making your life easier because businesses like always are looking to make money. And in 2017, they were completely fine doing social media management, right? And it was an easier sale, especially because there was the FOMO component, right? A lot of businesses were jumping on social media. A lot of businesses were crushing it like Gymshark, like Kylie Cosmetics, like Heisman, right? And businesses saw this and they wanted to be a part of it, right? So there was that kind of, you know, gold rush component and, that, and there was that uh, fear of missing out component. But nowadays, social media management does not quite cut it as, as well as it used to and online advertising is where it's at. So that was really the first day people realizing that social media management was not as easy to sell. And then what happened is they switched to online advertising through Facebook ads. With Facebook ads, the return was very clear and it was very easy to convey the value of Facebook ads and the service to clients because the return was very clear cut. And so for the longest time, Facebook ads agencies just raised supreme right because businesses wanted to run facebook ads that's where you could get the highest return on investment for clients and it was fairly easy to sell to clients but lo and behold there was another transition and what happened was that most agencies out there who were reaching out to clients were pitching facebook ads right and so facebook ads got a bit saturated now i'm not saying it's still not doable right it's still very very doable but right now it's the agencies that get creative with their service offering that actually end up winning that make the sales so much easier and you can really do this through two ways. The one that I recommend the most is you can still get them through the door with Facebook ads, right? But if all you do for them is Facebook ads and you have no awareness of how to sell products online or how to build brands online, you have no awareness of email marketing or messenger chatbots. I'm not saying you have to be an expert at that, but you should definitely understand how they integrate with the sales process and the sales funnel as well as the customer journey. When you can do that, not only are you gonna convey the value of your service so much better, but your returns and your results are gonna be much higher because all those areas like website optimizations, CRO, email marketing, sales funnels, copywriting, creatives, all those areas are gonna have a direct impact on the success 
of your Facebook ads. The other way you could do it is you could make your front end offer completely different and something that is not Facebook ads. I'm talking about other online advertising avenues that are not as tapped into as Facebook ads. And the third way you can get creative with it is you can offer a competitive advantage that no other agency is doing. For example, you could be so results oriented to the point where your service fee is almost a no brainer, but where you make your most money is through the return that you make them on the ads, right? That is a great way of getting an edge. Another edge you could get is for example, offering a money back guarantee. What I'm trying to say here is you need to get creative with your value offering to stand out from the noise, especially if you're going down the Facebook ads route, which by the way, is still very doable. And it's what my agency, for example, does as a front end offer. So that is that for the service. And the next thing is dropping a big thumbs up. YouTube just loves when that thing to improve. So I'd really appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, Let's get back into the video. The second thing to consider is the market and how it's changed through the years. And when this whole SMME space started, it was all about local businesses to the point where people were literally going to local businesses, walking in, pitching the service, right? But the main problem with local businesses is the fact that what you're optimizing for is leads, especially if you're doing online advertising. If you're doing social media management, obviously it's completely different and you run into a different problem, which is you can't actually quantify your return. But if you're doing online advertising for local businesses, like restaurants, like dentists, like clinics, whatever it is, right? What you're optimizing for is leads. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get people to walk through the door. And so obviously some people crushed it, but a lot of people run into two problems. The first problem is that the client told them that the leads were weak. They blame the fact that just because they couldn't close the leads meant that the leads you had brought them as an advertiser were poor. And yes, you can talk about the quality of the leads all you want, but at the end of the day, they make the decision. And the problem with optimizing for leads is you're not in complete control over the outcome, right? And how much money you generate. The second problem that people run into is the fact that yes, the clients were seeing the value of the leads, but much like scenario one, they just can't close the leads. And guess what? They can see the value in your leads all you want, but if they can't close the leads, do you think they're still gonna pay for those leads? Absolutely not, right? They're probably gonna tell you, hey, the leads you're getting me are great, right? But let me actually go back to the drawing board and get very good with sales. Maybe train my sales team to actually close the leads and then we'll pay for more leads. Why would I keep on paying for leads that I can't close? So those are the two main problems that people run into. And that is why running ads for local businesses got much less attractive and also much less beneficial for both the clients because you can't make them as much money because obviously there's a side of, of it that you can't control, which is them actually closing the leads. And number two, it's not as beneficial for you, right? Because with e-commerce, for example, which I'll talk about in just a second, with e-commerce, you can charge a percentage of profit or percentage of ROAS of what you're actually making, which is an amount that they and you can see, right? And so it makes charging those big retainers much easier because the value you can get them is very easily conveyed. What happened then was that the market needs completely shifted. What happened was that the market for local businesses actually got reduced, especially with this current pandemic and current social landscape and e-commerce just skyrocketed. And we can actually see on the screen the insane growth for e-commerce from 2017, which is the period of time that we're talking about. So from 2017 up to 2020. And as we can see on the screen, the total e-com sales are projected to go from 2.382 trillion to 6.542 trillion between 2017 to 2023. So that is 175% increase in just five years which is insane growth, especially compared to local business. So we've got a space that is currently booming. And not only that, but when you run ads for e-commerce or info products, right? The value is very clear because you can see the purchase conversion value. You can clearly see how much money you are making them, which makes your service very sustainable because it's very hard for a client to cut something that's making them a lot of money. And it makes charging bigger retainers much easier because you can be more logical about it. And on top of it, you can charge a percentage of the profit you're generating for them. And so long story short, that is where I see the future of SMMA going towards e-commerce and info products, especially seeing the growth of the market over these past three years that SMMA has been popularized. And I truly believe that the future successful SMMAs are e-commerce agencies who are not just doing Facebook ads. They, yes, you can do that as a front end offer, but who understand how to get incredible results for clients, how to build brands online and have a 360 approach towards it. Those that see the value in e-commerce and jump into e-commerce just because it's profitable and just because it's booming and don't actually have this 360 approach will absolutely lose out to agencies like mine that have a 360 approach to it. And so guys, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions you may have on this video and I'll be sure to check those out. And the final thing is if you wanna learn how to go about setting up your e-commerce agency, how to pick your niche, how to pick your service completely for free, you can go ahead and check out my free masterclass. Link in the description, there's nothing for sale and just the feedback I've been getting on it, honestly out of this world. People literally taking the stuff that I covered there to start their agency or sign more clients. So go ahead and check it out below. And as always guys, hope everything is going well in your agency journey and I will see you in the next one, peace.